بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, cherisher and sustainer of the world, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. All praise is due to Allah and his peace and blessing be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, his loyal companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Homes or houses are mentioned in the Holy Quran about 65 times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified to us that having a house is one of the greatest bless from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A bless that many people neglect and overlook. A bless that we usually neglect to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. However, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to praise Allah Almighty and thank Him for it every night. Before sleeping, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa kafana wa awana fakam mimman la kafiya lahu wa la mu'wi Praise is due to Allah who gave us food and gave us drink and who sufficed us and who provided a shelter for us for how many people are without their sufficiency in their needs and without a shelter every night this is how you should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the things that you take for granted in this world. And when we ignore the things that we take for granted and we do not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them, that is why you find people are not happy, always complaining. Allah Almighty already gave you, probably you are better than, you are in the top 10 or in the top 5 persons of the whole world population and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for you. But you are not aware of it, yes, because you are not thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly for them is a mean to attain this bless. The moment you wake up, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are alive, that this is a new opportunity, a new day, that you have health in your body and your ability, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you with all the capacities that you have with you, the place, the house, the family, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed you. Take one, two, three minutes to remember the lessons from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will stay out, start your day in a different way. And you will live your life in a totally different way, appreciating the moment. The moment that you are living in, this is your real life. Not the past, not the future. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. Not even after one hour. You never know if you can live until then. Your real life is now. Appreciate this moment. Do not link your happiness and your well-being and your goals in the future. I'll be happy when I graduate. I'll be happy when I become an adult. I'll be happy when I get in the university. I'll be happy when I graduate from the university. I'll be happy when I marry. I'll be happy when I have a house. I'll be happy when I have a job. I'll be happy that... And when you get these things, you're not happy. You're still the same person because you'll just have new goals in life. And this will continue forever. When you are young, you want to grow up. When you are old, you want to remain young. You do not acknowledge it. Nobody says, yeah, because you are not appreciating the moment. And that is why when you are talking about the house, appreciate what you have, the family that, you are, that are with you, the house that you are in, no matter what. This is a bliss from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the concept of a house in Islam, this is a very lengthy topic. We can just summarize the pillars for a good and happy household in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized that in one verse in the Holy Quran. Allah Almighty said, and among his signs is that he created for, for you from among yourselves partners or spouses to live with them in tranquility. The first one, tranquility and peace and calmness in the atmosphere of a house. This is the first. And then he instilled between you mercy and love, mercy and compassion, mercy in the treatment and in the dealing. You should always keep it in your mind. How merciful can you be, can you be to your wife, to your children, to the whole household? And every, everyone in the family should think in this way. And the other part is love and compassion. This is something very important. It is one of the requirements for balance in a human life. 
This is the way we are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the type of love is different between different family members. So between husband and wife, it's different from the love between parents and children, for example, or between siblings together. But it is required all the time to have this feeling of compassion and closeness. And if, God forbid, these are not fulfilled in the right way, shaitan might trick some people to fulfill it in a wrong way. And the concept of this, when you, when you fulfill these three elements together, those are the bases for tranquility and peace and security and love and compassion within the household. This is a good household in Islam. We can speak about the members of household very quickly. The first is the fathers. And the fathers in Islam are in charge of the whole family. They are entrusted with this responsibility. The Messenger of said that they are in charge. They are the caretaker. A man is the caretaker of his family and he will be responsible about them. He's a caretaker. It is his duty to provide for them. Not only the material need, the material, the intellectual, the educational, the spiritual, the religious, the emotional, and so on. The whole welfare of them. He is the caretaker for all of them. And a part of that among the duties of a father as well is to pray for them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, praying for his offspring and his families. And furthermore, it is his duty to guide them and educate them and advise them and share with them his experiences in life. And also keep them uh, or teach them about keeping connection with their relatives from his side. And furthermore, the mother, the second, she is also in charge as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And the wife is in charge in the house of her husband and she will be, she is responsible about them as well. She's in charge of the family household, within the family, the family members. Because their relationship with the mother starts early on and continues forever. Way before the father takes any part or any real part. So here, among her duties as a caretaker as well, then her duty to pray for them and make dua for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the dua of the wife of Imran for her offspring, for Maryam alayhi salam, before she is born, praying to her all the time to have a good offspring. And furthermore, it is her duty also to share with them her experiences in life, her experiences in social uh, matters and social affairs. One of the most important duties of a, fa a wife as well is to help her husband to keep good connection with his parents and with his relatives. This is something extremely important, sometimes overlooked. She should not take control of the husband and keep him busy all the time and not leave him any time to reach out for his parents and for his relatives. In fact, she should encourage him to do that. If he is busy, if he ignores them, if he neglects them, she should be the one who encourages him and reminds him all the time. And women are usually better than men in social affairs and social relations. They remember these things. A man might not remember it. She can remind him about the anniversaries, the occasions that they have, the, uh, and so on. She should, this is among her duties. A woman who does not do that, this could actually backfire on her. If she's trying to keep him away from his family, probably he will desert her altogether. And such a woman deserves to be deserted. A woman who keeps the man from keeping connection with his parents and his relative, that is not a good woman by any mean whatsoever. And in fact, if she actually encourages him to keep good connection with his families and with his relatives, he will love her more and he will appreciate her more and he will care for her more and he will remain with her more. So this is something that is also very important to establish these uh, relationships. Next after that are the children. And children has uh, important responsibilities to are their parents in obedience, with goodness, and, and in birr. We have spoken about this and this is something very lengthy. It is also part of their duties to pray for them. We have covered that also earlier on. And furthermore, it is their duty to respect and honor any elders who are in the household. For example, sometimes the grandparents are there. Some of the uh, old relatives are living with them or coming to visit and so on. And it is their duty as well to respect them and to pay attention to them. Now we are talking about these groups uh, of members. We can highlight two very important aspects 
to instill love and mercy and compassion and tranquility within the household. The first thing, establishing these houses on good grounds, on the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty said in the Holy Quran, those who believed and their heart feel tranquil with the remembrance of Allah. Verily, with the remembrance of Allah, hearts do feel tranquil. This is what instills tranquility and peace. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot inside the house. Many of us nowadays would never remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except in the salah or after the salah. That's when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ordered us to remember him all the time and often and a lot. Standing, sitting and laying down in all positions at all time. This is how you should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. Whenever you have any free moment, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever happens to you, good or bad, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should always link everything that happens to you in this world, link it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. This is how you will appreciate what you have and how you keep the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second is to recite the Holy Quran in the house. And this is neglected by many people. Sometimes the recitation of the Holy Quran is done only in Ramadan. As if the Holy Quran is only in Ramadan. Or sometimes only in the masjid. Keep part of your salah and part of your recitation of the Holy Quran and part of your dua and part of your supplication and your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the house. In fact, the Messenger وسلم, said, the best salah of a person is in his house, except for the obligatory salah. So the salah is a protection for the whole family member. It invites the angel over, and it prevents the devils from entering, and it stills the goodness within the household. So that is why you should keep some of your ibadah there as well. Something very important. And the recitation of the Holy Quran, the Messenger وسلم, said, the person who does not have any part of the Holy Quran in his heart is like a ruined home. You should have some of that all the time with you throughout your life. We will highlight or we'll end with something very important. Out of all of these things, one aspect, a practical aspect, the Messenger وسلم, taught us about it which is gentleness in all your affair. Be gentle. Whether something is good or bad is happening, whatever it is. The Messenger وسلم, said to Aisha radiallahu anha, the most beloved person to him, his beloved wife, Aisha radiallahu anha. He said to her, oh Aisha, be gentle. Oh Aisha, be gentle. For when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires goodness for a household, for a family, he guides them to the doors of gentleness. Doors of gentleness. This is a very precise and beautiful description from the Messenger وسلم. To everything in life, there are different ways to do it. There is always a door of gentleness to that matter. Take that one. Take this path. Keep it open all the time. Do not lock yourself or lock them away from it. Keep it open all the time. The doors of gentleness, as the Messenger وسلم, said, did everything. And the gentleness is not only within your family members only. Anyone who is in the house, whether among the guests or the relatives, or even the servants and the domestic helpers in your house. Many houses have them nowadays. It is the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, And it is the practice of the Messenger وسلم, to be gentle with them and to treat them with goodness. It was the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, never to ask help for anything if he can do it himself. He has many wives and he has servants. And the whole Muslim nation are ready to do whatever he wishes. It is their at most dream, but he will never allow anyone to serve him if he can serve himself. And it wasn't only with his family member. Inside the family member, Aisha described him. She was asked, how is the Messenger وسلم, in the house? When he enters, how is he? How is his life? She said, he is in the service of his family until the Adhan, subhanAllah. Help the family, serve with the family. This is the real man. This is the real hero. Not the one who sits, mashallah, 
logging, crossing and reclining and calling to his wife or to the servant to bring so and so and bring so and so. And it comes, this is too sweet. This is not sweet enough. This is a bit salty. This is, requires so and so. Unbelievable. And that is why, this is also a practical thing. The Messenger وسلم, never said anything about any kind of food that is presented to him. If he likes it, he will eat it. If he does not, he will not. Full stop. Not a single word. So even if he does not like it, and he is going to remain hungry for the rest of the day, or the rest of the night, till next day, he will not say anything, not require anything else. Simple, he will not eat. That's it. This is the practice of the Messenger وسلم. And with the family members, well not, also with the servants. We can just give one example. Um Ayman radiallahu anha. She was the slave girl of his father. And after his death, it belonged to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He set her free. She took care of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was young. And there was a beautiful relationship between them. But this is very lengthy. We'll just give one example. She came to visit the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. Now he is the ruler of Arabia. He is the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the ruler. He is the military leader. He is the judge. He is the spiritual guide. He is the scholar. He is, he is everything. He is their imam, their khatib, everything. Grave responsibilities. And now the grave responsibilities. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with all his duties, as we say, he used to serve himself. So she came to visit the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she made herself at home. Just relaxing completely, taking everything. Aisha radiallahu anha didn't recognize her. She does not know her. And she was wondering, who is this woman that is so free with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Now the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to get himself some water. See, he does not order anybody. So he went to bring some water to himself. Um Ayman radiallahu anha, she called and said, Oh Muhammad, bring some water to me as well. SubhanAllah. In the house of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she didn't even call him, oh, messenger of Allah, or prophet of Allah, or, or Abu Qasim, or nothing, just Muhammad. Something that is usually forbidden in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the Muslims to call the messenger وسلم, like that. And she was totally different. She was very close. He used to call her mother after the, the death of his mother. He used to call Umm Ayman, the messenger وسلم, he used to call her mother. Now, Aisha radiallahu was surprised. How come you address the messenger وسلم, in this way? At that time, the Messenger وسلم, has already poured her some water and he was bringing it back, carrying it, and he gave it to her with a smile. He was smiling and he says, She is still. She, um Ayman replied with something very beautiful. She said, I served him more than he served me. SubhanAllah. <laughs> she said, I served him more than he served me. And at that time, the Messenger وسلم, was smiling, coming back smiling, and he said, She is telling the truth. And he gave her, presented the water to her. This is a beautiful example of the messenger. This was the messenger. This was your beloved messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the real practice, the real sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You should take the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all. Not only choose whatever you like. This is the practice. This is the gentleness of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam within the household. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all our uh, household tranquil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it peaceful. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill among its members love and compassion and peace and security and safety and self-respect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to respect all the family members. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to respect also all those who are in our households, among the servants or the guests or everyone else. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us follow and practice the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make us good for ourselves and everyone around us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.